Working in finance is a very good learning curve because it's very, very high pressure. So I feel like it's a very good preparation for what I'm going into today. It looks just like a changing room to me. Fashionista Bianca may have swapped stocks for frocks, but when it comes to staying on trend, she believes the planet needn't pay the price. Our mission is to bring back a culture of caring for our clothes and hopefully becoming more mindful and conscious consumers. This is a rented dress, and then I'm wearing some amazing designer heels that I got in a thrift store. Hi Dragons, I'm Bianca, the founder of Wearing, and I'm here today to pitch for £100,000 for 4% equity. In a past life, I worked in banking, and I soon realized I had more clothes in my closet than stocks in my portfolio. And yet, the thought of picking an outfit every day was so daunting that I kept re-wearing the same things over and over again. So I built Wearing. And with my clothes now on an app in my phone, I can put outfits together from the comfort of my couch. I can also swipe left or right on outfits recommended by our AI, and it refines its suggestions based on my feedback. It's like Tinder before your clothes. Wearing also helps me shop and consume more mindfully. It suggests sustainable, pre-loved or rental pieces that I can purchase to complement what I already own. To date, we've got 20,000 downloads. Now we're looking to monetize by a cut of sales from both services and products. Join the wardrobe revolution now. A smartphone app which helps its users to select outfits whilst promoting sustainable fashion is the offering from Bianca Rangecroft. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to digitize your wardrobe. I take the picture. Who is seeking an extra large £100,000 investment in return for a 4% share in her business? This has recognized that it's a shirt, it's bohemian. We also show you what things you could combine it with. Bianca's app could help its users dress to impress, but will it prove the perfect fit for a dragon? Deborah Meaden is first to try this business out for size. It sounds very interesting because you can't go on any of these, any of the mainstream websites now. You go on to Selfridges, they've got rental sections. You know, people are moving into this circular economy. Yes. So how do you see that interaction with people wanting to sell their product, to rent their product? I love that. How does that work? One of the biggest and most beautiful things about the sustainable fashion community is collaboration. So we've been building up caring partners, the likes of Trade, Thrift Plus, Oxwash, and all that happens is we plug in their website to the app. Are you pre-revenue? We are pre-revenue. Yeah. So how have you funded it so far? I decided to take a huge risk leaving my career in banking, and so I used my savings to essentially kickstart the app. So how much money was that? £70,000. Okay. So far. And how much money are you spending at the moment? It's £6,000 a month. And how much cash have you got in the business? We've only got about 10 grand left. Oh, right. So you are up against it? Correct. Thank you. Without a fresh injection of capital, Bianca's fashion business could easily fold. Now Stephen Bartley wants to discover which bits of the technology underpinning her app the entrepreneur actually owns. Bianca. Hi. What's proprietary here? Mm, great question. Everything within the app is proprietary. That includes the algorithm to create outfit combinations. So for me, style is subjective. So yeah. how does a styling rules and recommendations algorithm produce good results for a million different people who have subjective style? Very good question. What we've done is we've just made sure that things that we put together don't clash and we've done So you would never clever... recommend Peter's socks with that suit? <laughs> Uh-oh. Warning, warning, Bianca, warning. <laughs> so, Bianca, I... thank you for saying to him that he's asked so many good questions and I'm quite impressed because it's the best questions he's asked so far. Um, <laughs> 
I've got one thing for you, which probably you won't like. Yes. Why have you come in here with such a ridiculous valuation? If we look at comparables for high growth tech companies. But you're a zero growth company. So I go back to my question. Why is this worth anywhere near what valuation you've come in trying to raise at? I'm sorry to give you such a hard time. No, no. This is what you must have come in here yeah. expecting that when you come in with such a valuation. So the valuation that we've picked is 2.5 million, assuming very conservative levels of purchases, both products and services within our user base in the app. What you have developed is very, very simple. I could have this done in a quite a short space of time. Yeah. So, so <laughs> where's the value? I, I, I see your point, but we've got a very strong management team we have secured some early interesting partnerships with the sustainable community. You could have a very strong management team, but that doesn't attract a valuation metric for you at the moment. A disgruntled Peter Jones has failed to buy into Bianca's explanation of how she's arrived at her hefty seven-figure price tag. And Tuka Suleiman wants to find out more about exactly how she intends to convert clicks into cash. Why don't you just explain mm. the actual business model? How are you going to make any money? So we have a shopping service on the app where you can browse through sustainable products from ethical retailers. If you make a buy there, we take a cut. What percentage? We have negotiated deals between 10 and 15% and we hope that those will go up. And then we have a very high margin B2B proposition where we can help by sharing our data usage and stats such as wardrobe composition, trends, etc., with retailers. By the time you've given me that information, style's finished, we've moved on. Yes, but most importantly, you know what our users are putting together. You've got insight into how Gen Z's are styling denim miniskirts. You've got insight into what they actually own. Give me the forecast of how you see this progressing in numbers. So, in the next 12 months, we're going to turn over 500,000. And net profit? We've modelled on, on an EBITDA basis, which is minus 444,000. So, therefore, you're going to re raise lots and lots of money? We're going to be looking to raise about a million pounds. Hopefully, you'll get a dragon. Absolutely. And your valuation will go up. Indeed. Especially if you get me. I agree. But I, you know, I have to think about it. Thank you, Tuka. The jury is currently out for the Den's King of Couture. Though it appears that a Gen Z genned up Stephen Bartlett is ready to deliver his verdict. I think you are an exceptional entrepreneur. However, my central focus is, do I think you have created something that will retain users so that you can keep them there and one day monetize that audience. Yeah. And I don't. While I think you will have a tremendous sort of entrepreneurial success in your career, I don't believe that it's this. And so for that reason, I'm out. A blow for the young entrepreneur who has lost her first dragon. Deborah Meaden may be in tune with Bianca's plans to put the brakes on fast fashion, but is she prepared to accelerate her business? I absolutely love this. It is bang on for what is about to happen. And I love that you've done it. Can you feel a butt coming? Yes, I can, but I'm optimistic. Okay. I think your target of the sales mm. in your first year is incredibly, incredibly racy in a market that is not yet fully adopted. I think there is a high risk of failure. Um, I'd say you've got a 50-50 chance on this. I won't be investing, so I'm out. Bianca, I just think you have completely overcomplicated the proposition. Mm. I just don't believe that there is actually an opportunity for this mm. in as big of a way you think it is. So um, I'm sorry to say it, but wish you all the best with the business and I'm out. Thank you, Sarah. I, I love things like this. This is it's really, really exciting. 
Now I would have been really interested to have invested in a business like yours if you came in with a far more reasonable valuation, but you haven't. So that is the only reason why, sadly, I'm not going to invest and say that I'm out. A trio of turndowns for this trader in turn-ups. Only Tuka Suleiman is yet to declare his position. So will he be willing to buy into Bianca's vision for the future of his industry? Ah, oh, Bianca. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Um, you're great. And you, you've had a hard time today. You've got lots of ideas and you need somebody to sit down with them and say, what is commercial, mm. what is not commercial? And in a way, um, you need me to help you. Was that an offer? Not quite. I'm just, but I'm just giving you the reality of it. You're trying to make a movie without a script. So, so there's a lot of dreaming going on, and some of it definitely will not be a reality, yeah. unless you get somebody to write you a check out for 10 million. So I'm not going to make it offer today, and I'm out. Thank you all. Thanks for your time. Sadly for Bianca, she must leave the den with nothing. She may have been stylishly turned out, but it wasn't enough to prevent her business from being turned down. At least the fashion entrepreneur appears to be wearing the criticism well. Wow, that was hard. But it's really important to get harsh feedback very early on. She's got something. However, it's very blurred. I think she's first class. If things don't work out, I would give her a job. If you don't give her a job, I'll give her a job.